Welcome to A struct 3, which is steel design. First, let's introduce what is steel design. Steel design, or more specifically, structural steel design, is an area of structural engineering used to design steel structures. These structures include schools, houses, bridges, commercial centers, tall buildings, warehouses, aircraft, ships, and stadiums. The design and use of steel frames are commonly employed in the design of steel structures. Okay, types of structural steel. Carbon steels use carbon as the chief strengthening element with minimum yield stresses ranging from 220 megapascal to 290 megapascal. High strength low alloy steels have yield stresses from 480 megapascal to 840 megapascal. Quince and tempered alloy steels have yield stresses of 480 megapascal to 600 megapascal. It is obtained by heat treating low alloy steels. So these are the basic structural steel types. Carbon steels, high strength low alloy steels, and quince and tempered alloy steels. Okay, properties of steel. First, yield stress, and denoted as F sub Y, is the unit tensile stress at which the stress strain curve exhibits a well defined increase in strain or data formation without any increase in stress. Number two, tensile strength or F sub U is the largest unit stress that the material achieves in a tension test. Number three, modulus of elasticity or E is the slope of the initial straight line portion of the stress strain diagram. It is usually taken as 200,000 MPa or megapascal for design calculation for all structural steel or 200 GPa or gigapascal. Number four, steel should have ductility. It is the ability of the material to undergo large inelastic deformations without fracture. Number five, steel should have toughness. It is the ability of the material to absorb energy and is characterized by the area under a stress strain curve. Six, weldability. It is the ability of steel to be welded without changing its basic mechanical properties. Seven, Poisson's ratio. It is the ratio of the transverse strain to longitudinal strain. And eight, shear modulus. It is the ratio of the shearing stress to shearing strain during the initial elastic behavior. So these are the properties of steel. First, yield stress. Number two, tensile strength. Number three, modulus of elasticity. Number four, ductility. Number five, toughness. Number six, weldability. Number seven, Poisson's ratio. And number eight, shear modulus. Centroid of an area. The centroid of an area is analogous to the center of gravity of a homogeneous body. The location of the centroid of an area bounded by the x and y axis and the function y is equals to f or the function of x can be found by integration using the following equations a sub t or the total area times the centroid along x is equal to the integration of x differential of a or a t or the area total times y sub c or the centroid along y is equal to the integration of y the distance y 
times the differential of area. Centroid of plane area. The centroid of a complex area can be found by dividing the area into basic shapes, rectangle, triangles, circles, or any other shapes. And for this diagram, we can divide into three different areas. First, area 1, and the shape is a rectangle. Area 2 is also a rectangle, and area 3 is also a small rectangle. Then, we find the centroid of the plane area. And for this example, or diagram, this is the centroid of the plane area. We're in at the origin on the up lower left, 0 or O, the distance from the x-axis is denoted as x sub c, and from the y-axis, y sub c. So we have the point x sub c and y sub c, which is the centroid of the plane area given. Next, moment of area. The moment of area, or designated as I, of an area is a very useful property in mechanics problems. The moment of inertia about the x and y axis and the function y is equal to the function of x can be found by integration. So this is the area and this is the centroid of the plane area. And along the x axis, we have the distance d. And for computation, Ix, or the moment of inertia along x, is equal to the centroid or I, gx, the centroid of the given area, plus the area times the distance square from the x-axis to the centroid of the plane area. So this is the formula for moment of inertia. Properties of common geometric shapes. These are formulas generated based on the centroid and moment of inertia. For a triangle with a base B, a height H, and the distance A, to find X sub C is equal to A plus B all over 3, while, while, while Y sub C is equal to H over 3, which means from this axis going to the centroid and the distance y and the, the value is equivalent to one third of h. So y sub c is equal to one third of h. Or if the axis is above the point of this triangle, the y sub c is equivalent to two third of h. From this point, going to this maximum point, the distance is two-thirds of h, or in this case, x-axis to the centroid, the distance yc is equal to one-third of h. And the area of a triangle is always one-half of the base times height. And for the moment of inertia, I x is equal to the base times height cube all over 12 or bh cube all over 12. The centroid of i g x is equal to bh cube all over 36. So this is the triangle formula for the centroid and moment of inertia. Next, another geometric shape is a rectangle and we have the base and the depth and the centroid is always one half of the base and one half of the depth so the centroid is always one half and one half of the base so area for a rectangle is always b times d and for the moment of inertia along x, i sub x is equal to 
BD cube all over 3 while if the moment of inertia along y is the opposite of BD cube which is DB cube all over 3 and the centroid or I based on the gravity of X is equal to BD cube all over 12 and the gravity I GY is equals to DB cube all over 12. Another shape is a circle with a radius r and the diameter is always equal to twice of the radius. And the area for a circle is equal to pi r squared or in terms of diameter it is equal to 1 fourth pi d squared or pi over 4 d squared. And the centroid of i gx is also equal to igy which is equivalent to pi r to the fourth all over 4. In terms of diameter it is pi d to the fourth all over 64. So you can use this area and the moment of inertia. What about the centroid? The centroid is always at the center of the circle. Next, quarter circle which means one-fourth of the shaded area of a circle. The area is one-fourth. Definitely it's one-fourth of pi r squared or the area of circle. And x sub c is also equal to y sub c. So x sub c and y sub c are the same value and it is equivalent to 4r all over 3 pi. While moment of inertia along x and y are the same which is pi r to the fourth all over 16. And igx is also equal to igy and it is equal to 0 0.055 r exponent 4. So these are circle and quarter circle formulas. Semi-circle, which means one half of the total area of the circle or area is equals to one half of pi r squared, where y sub c is equal to 4 r over 3 pi. y sub c is equal to 4 r all over 3 pi. And i sub x is equal to i sub g y is equal to pi r to the fourth all over 8 and i g x is equal to 0.11 r to the fourth. And the last is ellipse. We have the distance A and distance B along the centroid of the plane area ellipse. And the area for ellipse is always equal to pi AB while A sub GX is equal to pi AB cube all over 4 and IGY is equal to pi BA cube all over 4. So interchange A and B and B and A. The longer distance is A while the shorter distance is B.